Hi everyone, this is Dr. Jordan Cosson and Dr. Chris Meinhold here with PhysioU. And today's Mentoring Minutes is gonna be talking more so about balance in, in elderly, mitigating fall risk using power training. Now we know there's a lot of good research out there for strength training itself, so we should still be working on getting these individuals stronger. But one of the things that we may not be doing as often is actually power training. So there is some good research out there that does show that actually the, uh, the power itself, mainly in the lower extremities, is actually decreased in uh, community dwelling elderly individuals that have had previous falls compared to their non-faller counterparts. The other thing is as we age, we actually tend to lose power, so force and velocity, faster than we actually do lose strength. So training these individuals' power is actually gonna be quite important. There's a great article, uh, they took 120 healthy older adults and they split them up into four different groups and then they also had a control group who didn't train or anything. For 10 weeks, they actually trained them with power Power, but each group had a different level of power itself. So the first group with the low power training was 20% of their one rep max. The second one, so more of a mid or moderate power training was 50% of their one rep max. And then the last one was the 80% or high, 80% um, of their one rep max itself. And then again, the last one was more of a control. They didn't do anything. So for those 10 week, they trained two times a week, five exercises were used. And surprisingly enough, there was no balance exercises or anything. All they did was they used machines, pneumatic machines. They did three sets of eight, but the emphasis was more on their rapid concentric, so a one second concentric followed by a three to four second eccentric. And the, the exercises that they actually used were leg press, knee extension, knee flexion itself, and then also the seated rows. They actually incorporated some of the upper body stuff. And they compared, hey, is there a difference between if we train these individuals by going more for a power based thing, so doing things more rapidly, at different uh, intensity levels, so 20% versus 50% versus 80%. And what they actually found was training these individuals' power, and it was actually the lower load, so the 20% training of their one rep max, they actually did better with balance uh, across the board compared to the moderate and also the higher intensity. So you can train these people at very low, safe intensities and still elicit an improved balance. And how they measured that was they actually put them on a balance platform, they did a nice Romberg stance, they tested and looked at different um, sway markers, but also they did a single leg stance as well with their eyes open and closed. And with that, again, they saw that the lower 20% actually did better with balance, but power increased uh, across the board. So if you're training mainly for the balance, it's actually safer to go with the 20%, you can definitely do that. Another article actually talked about using cluster sets with these individuals doing power training. So our traditional set and rest ratio is typically, we'll do a set of an exercise and then follow it up with maybe 150 seconds of rest. That's what this particular article did. They compared it to cluster setting. These individuals in the cluster set group actually did uh, two repetitions of an exercise, but then followed it with a 30 second rest and did another two repetitions of the exercise for a total of eight reps. They compared the difference in power and also um, balance in these individuals, but also quality of life. And it actually showed that the cluster setting group did better across the board than the typical traditional sets. So with that, training these individuals at higher velocity with lower intensity, but also maybe implementing that idea of cluster sets can actually improve balance and quality of life in these individuals. Perfect. So then, yes, the... The particular article that we talked about initially, you can do things on machines if you feel a little bit safer, but also you can just incorporate this and get creative with all the exercises that you're doing with these individuals. For instance, we're always going to do some sort of uh, test for balance and endurance. One of the ones you can do is the five second sit to stand, but you can actually use that as a training method too. So we're going to have Chris here, if you don't mind crossing your arms over your chest, Chris, we're going to do a five second sit to stand. So what I'm going to have you do, Chris, is I'm going to set a timer for five seconds. Your goal is to stand up and sit down as fast, but as safe as you can. So up and down as fast as you can. Ready and go and back down as fast as you can. So quicker. Good. Two. Come on. Faster. Three, four and five. Good. So doing things a little bit more explosive. So initially they might be a little bit hesitant to go faster, but you really want to cue these people as long as you're, they're safe and you're near them. And obviously you'd have a gate belt around them, making sure that they're going quick and explosive. Another example of an exercise that we usually do is step ups. We're working on strength, but how you can change this strength exercise to more of a power exercise is actually emphasizing the speed, the velocity of things. So with this, Chris, I'm just going to have you step onto this chair and then all the way up. 
Good, and then back down. Now, instead of just going through it relatively slowly, Chris, can you do that as fast as you can, comfortably and safely? So come on up, good, and then back down one. Good, two, three, four, and five. Take a break. Now you can, again, play around with the cluster setting idea, but realistically, any exercise that you use here can actually be changed to more of a powerful exercise by just including more of a velocity type training. Okay, everyone, so thanks again for tuning in to Mentoring Minutes. Today was again more so about training more power, also strength, but including power in your uh, training for the elderly individual, especially if you're trying to mitigate fall risk. Again, we showed a couple examples here, but realistically, get creative. You can do this with any exercise. So yes, continue to work on strength, but if anything, start making them do things a little bit quicker. There's a lot of good research that shows, hey, it actually gets them a little bit um, more stable as far as balance wise, but also improves their quality of life. Thanks again for tuning in. Thanks again for joining us today uh, with Mentoring Minutes. Don't forget to take a look and uh, follow us on social media, but also taking a look at the Knowledge Central portion of our physiou.help for any other information uh, that you could be needing.